There was one particular night I was having a seizure type episode. I was certainly frightened and scared because my body, like every three seconds was just, would, would twitch and convulse and from head to toes sort of thing. Fortunately, Duncan was at my side. I think Duncan and I have a very special relationship and I think that shows. All I can remember is growing up being a diabetic. I was diagnosed at two and a half. Everything I've ever known and ever had to do kind of revolved around diabetes. Planning a regular work day around it, it can be stressful. You know, having diabetes is a full-time job in and of itself. After a while and living alone for two years, I realized that a safety net was probably necessary. Our prison dog training program is called at both ends of the leash, or ABLE. So we teach inmates to train assistance dogs that we then partner with people who have disabilities. We do medical alert placements, so primarily with folks who have a condition like diabetes where the dog can detect a change in the condition and alert the person to it. These dogs we have can tell you when a person's gonna have a seizure 45 minutes before a medical machine can do it. Before you even get to diabetic alert skills, you learn 97 other skills. They learn 102 different cues, skills, and a combination of scenarios. They go to the fridge, open the fridge, close the fridge, you grab out the item, close the fridge, bring it back to the person, like... And go get help. And, and go get help. <laughs> After being in here for a while, you tend to, a lot of things get shut off. These pups really help bring that back. The biggest testament to it, the success of the program has actually been one of our first trainers who started the program, Al Rainey. When I first began, it was just a dog on the end of the leash and I was a guy in prison. You know, I wasn't a guy that tried a lot of things, but this organization and training dogs made me a better people person. You go to sleep with the animal, you feed the animal, you take them out to play, they're a part of your day all day. The emotions I felt with my very first dog like handing them over was almost like losing a friend. It was tough. It was very tough. But if you see that dog transition, it, it makes you feel like you completed a job that will help, you know, an individual. So on the first day of training, one of the things his trainer mentions the first day of class is your expectations and keeping those manageable because just as they're new to you, you're also new to them. Over time, you know, you really have to build that bond with the dog. You, know, you kind of get into a routine and it took us probably a good six months before we hit our groove, and then, you know, 18 months thereafter until we really hit our stride and, you know, he knew what to expect, I knew what to expect from him. He understood, you know, what his duties entailed, and he's been fantastic. Hi. What is this? Good boy. That, that's his alert. Good boy. Yeah, good boy. So since he just alerted me, I am going to check my blood sugar. So right now I'm guessing my blood sugar is probably going high since we just had lunch not too long ago. And uh, I probably undercorrected for uh, what I needed to take in terms of my insulin. Come to find out my blood sugar is high, I'll take insulin to, to bring it down. On duty, he is definitely all business. By definition, he is a medical device. The vest is more for being out in public, identifying him as a service dog. If he's being distracted, he's not able to do his job efficiently or well, he's there for a reason, and, and that's to, to make sure that I'm safe and nothing happens to me. But, you know, I wanna make sure that it's not just all work and no play. He loves to swim, he loves to play fetch. Giving him that time off for him to be a dog. Duncan's always looking after my health, so it's my job I look after his as well. The most profound thing that we hear again and again from our clients is this sense that I have someone with me. I have someone doing this with me. I have someone who cares about 
me. I know for a fact that night that uh, he brought the juice to me while I was in bed. He knew that I was struggling and needed help, and I have really no idea what, what would have happened had, had he not been there to help. He's a partner in crime with me now.